Hey, welcome back to the ringworm. Truly, I don't even know how many days I've been living out here, but it's a lot. It's got to be creeping up towards a thousand, thousand days living in a tent in the middle of nowhere. I haven't done a video like this, I think in over a year, just a one day. You guys can just see all the weird stuff I, I do when I'm not building, when I'm not making uh, chainsaw construction videos. The party, the 10 day party just ended uh, yesterday. Tito and Sarah went home and now I've got a day of just catch up before I can get going on the cabin again. And I got a lot of weird stuff to do today, so I thought you guys would like to watch it. I am. A couple of things you've seen seen a lot on this channel or heard me talk about and I just haven't gotten around to doing. I am gonna collect a bunch of puff balls, get all the spores in here with water. The only problem is all the water I have here is in my water tank, my water tower, and it has a little tiny bit of bleach in it. I'd hate to go spread all these spores around and have none of them come up because there was bleach. I do have a swamp back here a ways, so I might have to get a pan, fill this up with swamp water, put the spores in it, and then I can't remember, I think there's something else you can put in it too to help them grow. Anyway, we'll do that. You guys know my cabin, the way I, I make lumber. I cut a tree down, I mill up the log with the chainsaw, and then I just set all the boards right back together in a tree shape. Horrible way to do it. Nobody, I don't recommend anybody does that. I just do it that way. I don't know, because I'm lazy or I don't know. Just, I never sticker them, never let them air dry. Usually, because I mill the log, set it down, mill another log, set it, and then I take them and I build right away. Some of the cabin lumber did sit for quite a while. You guys saw a few episodes back, I picked up some of those really fat, like 15 inch boards by one and a half, picked them up and there was like big masses of mycelium, like the little fine mushroom roots, the white stuff, and I think we even put some of it under a microscope. So I uh, had Tito pick me up. I got a couple different things. It's fungal spray for your yard. I don't know, one has one is fungus and insect control, which might be a good one. You're supposed to hook it up to a hose. I don't have a hose, I don't have water pressure out here. So we'll have to get creative and figure out how to use that, spray that. I will do that today, I promise I'll do that today, because if I don't, starting Basically tomorrow, I'm going to start wrapping the cabin, putting the siding on and everything. So I only have today to do it. Also, you've seen this 30-30 uh, cowboy gun in a couple episodes. Uh, I've had it for a while and only got to shoot it once in that last episode when I blew up the pumpkin. So I do want to take a couple shots today. I mean, some of this stuff, clearly I don't have to do, but it's been like something in the back of my mind for so long that I just, I really want to fit it all in today. And, you know, I got some other stuff. I found a... A shovel, a huge shovel on the side of the road. It's all dinged up. I was thinking I could cut the end off. Anyway, you don't care. Let's get to it. What should we do first? Actually, we did a great job of burning up uh, all my old building supplies and branches and everything the last 10 days, but the only thing we didn't get to is these building scraps, so I'm going to keep throwing those on the fire. You guys know I don't really have fires by myself for fun. It's just not really my thing, and I'm always too busy doing stuff to do that. But I've got leftover hot dogs, and we got building scraps, so, you know, sometimes things come together. Man, it was like 30, I think the thermostat said 33 this morning. When I got up, I was freezing for almost two hours. That little heater in the man cave... I had to turn it on, both to thaw my body, but also to warm up my Jackery batteries because I need to charge those too, and they won't charge if it's too cold. Man, you get moving around a little bit, the sun gets out. It's gonna be a gorgeous day, I think mid 50s, so perfect for doing all this stuff. All right, got a pan and a jug. Let's go find some water. It hasn't rained in a really long time, at least not hard, so I don't know what we'll find back here. Look at that perfectly white shell fungus. That's cool. Wow. Wild. Uh, how do we get through here? Man, look at that. This is how the trees go down out here. Look at that thing. Several trees all together. Uh-oh, I'm standing in the swamp and there's no water. Well, this didn't work. Usually this whole thing's full of a foot or two. It's all dry. Uh, I have to think of something else. Maybe we walk up the swamp here a little bit, see if we find any pockets. It looks 
really dry though. Darn. Yeah. It's usually underwater here. And it's it's damp, but I don't think we're gonna find any pools. If nothing else, I get a lot of spider webs in the face. And you can see a lot of animals walk through here. I probably the deer probably come down here to drink. I'm trying to think if there's any other place out here that I could think of that might have water. Oh, whew, it's a long walk, but I can think of one other place. Let's go try it. Holy cow, you know, it just crossed my mind. Hunting season just started. This is a horrible idea. Okay, I'm out of here. Might just have to drive out later today and get some lake water. Hey, listen, I don't mean to make this uh, video too self-helpy, but it's just my recommendation. You make a to-do list for the day. You choose the things that sound like the most fun. You put them at the top of the list. You do them first, and then don't worry if you don't get to the rest of them. The problem is I'm just coming from a week and a half off from doing anything productive, so I feel like I just need to ease back into work. After exploding that pumpkin with the tannerite uh, the other day, I think we decided that every birthday week every year we're going to end the week with blowing something up with tannerite and we're going to save we're going to save the casing, make some sort of uh, commemorative plaque out of it, maybe uh, etch the year into it and what got blown up. So I'm going to hold on to that one. Yeah, now that hunting season's on, might as well be slightly safe. The only thing worse than getting shot is getting shot on your own property. Just out of curiosity, this is uh, the 22 walking pistol range that you guys always see. And there's this one shot you've seen a bunch of times too, that you can see several targets ahead down through here. It's maybe 150 yards or something. I think that's one of the few targets that's actually rated for rifles. So I'm just gonna see if I can hit it from here. I guess if I can hit it, then uh, I don't need to go sight it in with paper. See if I can hit it without a rest. Yep. Wow. <laughs> that really swung the target, almost flipped over. Once it starts flopping, we'll try it again. Make sure it wasn't a fluke. All right. I'd say it's pretty well sighted. <laughs> Uh, I mean, while I'm at it, I kind of still like to poke some holes in paper with that. Problem is out here, you can see how dense the woods are. There's nowhere to shoot more than 100 yards. That's why it's been on my list for a couple of years to make a rifle range out here. I mean, even the original handgun range that you guys saw made in the first year is pretty sparse, but uh, that got kind of destroyed when I uh, cleared the rest of those cedars out of there for a building project. So even that needs to be set back up. Uh, I guess there's no place really to shoot it longer distance. Well, at least we know it hits stuff. Yeah, this is where the, the handgun range was. It was that chain hanging back there with the steel targets on it. And you guys remember early video, I built that table with the chainsaw. And then we cut all these out of here for some siding for something. I think the man cave. And that's that chunk of tree still needs to come out. I'll probably have to cut those for the wall boards on the inside of the cabin. I think I probably have enough logs to do the siding. It's all the same stuff. It's gonna be three quarter inch cedar inside and out, but I'll clear those out if I need more wood. And then all I really have here, I don't know if you can see back there is a rifle rest. I can't remember why I put that up, but I'd like to cut that out way back there, just right along this trail, along the side of it. At least 150, a couple hundred yards back would be great. Build another little table there, some stools for it. Someday, you know, <laughs> when you walk out into the woods with a tent and chainsaw, it takes an awful long time to get things set up like you want them. Although, I mean, of course, originally when I came out here, I didn't have any idea what I wanted and what I want changes every day. So maybe you just never get there. I don't know. And also, I'd really like to get a deer this year. But as you can imagine, you know, I don't have power. I don't have a refrigerator, freezer. If I got one, it'd have to be 
right at the end of hunting season when it'd be pretty cold. And then, you know, of course you can smoke the meat and you can preserve it all sorts of ways. I just don't have, last year I didn't have the time because I was trying to finish the man cave before the snow really hit this year. I mean, I started in spring, it's now October, and it's going to take me every second to get the uh, cabin done before the winter. I mean, there's just not, not time to do everything you want, but it's all right because everything you do is really fun. Trying to figure out where we could put the jackeries in the generator so we don't have to listen to it all day. Actually, probably just needs to run a couple hours. Uh, you guys mind if I make some noise? You're fine with it? I'll do it. I'll just put it right here. I'll stick it around back here so it's not too annoying. You know, these things have been awesome. <laughs> you guys remember I got these, uh, I don't know, year, year and a half ago or something. Jackery sent them to me with those solar panels. That one's the 1500, which it seems like it's the one of the more popular ones at least one of the more popular big ones this i need to call them and find out the 2000 and this configuration it didn't seem like they sold it for very long i don't know if there was an issue with it or what the deal is it's now the explorer pro or something like that by the way this is not a it's not an advertisement for them i just know that these things are pretty popular and people might like to know more about them the thing with the 1500 is if it's dead it can take, I don't know, six hours or something to charge up. And the 2000 is, must be some different technology. That thing charges in a couple hours. You can, you can just put a lot of current into that, which you can't into the 1500, which I mean, for most people, I don't think it makes any difference, especially if you only got a couple solar panels. If you can only put 200 watts of solar into either of them or into any of them, it doesn't make any difference how, how fast you can soak the power in if you plug it into a wall plug. But like this, when I charge them with a the generator, this thing's on. 22%. This is on 74%. They'll probably take about the same amount of time to charge up, which is not very long. Maybe maybe a couple hours at most. Technology and all this stuff, I you guys probably know. I don't I'm not a techie. I don't try to keep up on this kind of stuff. I like to use these products. I hate learning about them. It's the same with anything, whether it's like guns or guitars or solar panels. I just want to get something and want it to work. I don't want to spend any time looking it up. I definitely don't call myself a gun guy, for instance. Apparently, I have quite a few guns. I don't know anything about any of them. I just know how to shoot them, and probably not well. But these things, these have been bulletproof. No pun intended, but this is the one I've used almost exclusively, just because it charges really fast. You can, I've got those four 200 watt panels, so you can plug it in, charge the whole thing by solar in a half a day. Anyway, probably more than you wanted to know. You could see, just yesterday when I cleaned up from the party, I took my solar panels away, which was a real drag. So now every time I need power or need to charge the jackery, I've got to use the generator. It's a real bummer, but that's all right. It's uh, better than what I was doing before, which was a car battery. Big old group 27 car truck battery that ran for about a quarter as long as one of these did. If you ever go do this something like this yourself though, car battery is not that bad of a deal. Probably 90% of my power usage out here has to do with making videos. Might even be more than that. I mean, outside of videos, all I need to charge is my phone, my headphones, because I listen to a lot of books and podcasts, headlamp once every couple months. So, I mean, it's almost nothing. Actually, you know, I think for the first year or something, I just charge stuff in the car. Whenever I'd have to go out to town, go get groceries or whatever, I just plug stuff in for a short amount of time and it would be fine. So yeah, if you ever decide to walk out of the real world and go into the forest and see how long you can hack it, if you're not videoing it, you don't need you don't need very much power. And if you really went out into the bush, and you didn't have cell service, gosh, you just really don't need much power at all. You get a headlamp that just takes like AAA batteries. Those last for months at a go. Yeah, living in the woods is cheap, as long as you don't try to film it. It's really interesting. This thing sucks so much power. I think you can charge 1100 watts. Is it watts or amps? I can never remember. Sucks a ton of power. So I, I can't plug them both into the generator at the same time. I plug this one in, let the thing cycle, get going, and then I can plug that one in. You can even, you can hear it. Ready? the load on the generator 
now that it's evened out I can plug the other one in so that's a thousand thirty four watts 266 it's only 266 because it's already at 75% charged if it was at you know 50 or below I think it would take 400 watts maybe just a lot slower to charge still works great though I've never plugged anything into those that they couldn't handle I tried using a circular saw that Makita that I bought to rip up all the lumber for this I just tried plug it in just to see what happened ran fine actually ran better than on the generator I even used, uh, when I was trying to crystallize all the sap in here from the wet wood after I built this, used the heat gun on high, and it worked great. Those things are nuts. They're fantastic. Let's see if we can make this a workable shovel. This thing's nice. It'd be great for wood chips. Those sparks are pokey. It's nice, it smells like fireworks. Never throw away a perfectly good road shovel. That's what I always say. See, this is great. I'm getting stuff off my list, and it's kind of fun. How did I ever live without this? Well, I got two pump sprayers. Both are broken, but I think I can piece them together and make one of them work. Now we just have to figure out this stuff. So this says spray concentrate for gardens. This is a fungicide for gardens, so I guess you could like eat this stuff. I'll probably taste it later. This is fungus plus insects for lawns, so you probably don't want to eat this stuff. I probably won't eat any part of the cabin soon, so... I mean, I am a little bit worried about the bugs, any bugs that are still living in the wood, you know, because it was milled fresh and put right on there. So far, that's pine framing, aspen roof boards, aspen floor. The aspen was pretty free of bugs. The pine, there were a couple. I tried to, anything that had holes in it, I just burned but you just never know. So I guess I'd rather use this stuff that works for insects too. The problem is this one tells you how to mix it with water. This one you're supposed to hook a hose up to. So somehow you gotta guess how much, what the flow of water is going through here for how much junk it picks up. I don't know how we'd figure that out. I say we just guess. Let's do like a quarter of a bottle to a gallon of water. I'm just gonna put it on pretty sparingly anyway. Hopefully it'll kill any uh, fungus that's in the wood or on the wood and it's all going to be closed in. Plus it only it says it only lasts for like two weeks anyway. Probably evaporates, so I don't know. You know what? We're just going to do it. You know, it's probably a lot more water to uh, sauce in here because you can spray 2,500 square feet. Then again, I'm not soaking anything. I'm just going to mist it up. I don't know. You know, sometimes you just don't know. Wow, it smells just like paint thinner. Nice. After the party, I've got about uh, half a tank left in my water tower, so maybe 100 gallons or so, and I'm trying to decide. I'd like, I like to keep it full, but we've had a couple mornings in the mid to low 30s, so man, I love winter. I love camping in the winter. I love being out here in the winter, but I'm never quite ready for it. You guys probably remember, I think it was the last two years, I did have the hot tub full, and I left it too long, had to break the ice out with an axe. And then last year I had to use hot water on my uh, water tower on the valve just to get it to open to drain the water. So, I mean, I'll probably do the same thing this year. I'm certainly going to have a hard time emptying out 100 gallons of good clean shower water when it's not quite freezing. So maybe that's just what I do every year. Man, everything out here just changes when the winter gets here. Water is the big thing. Water becomes a real issue. In this place, you guys remember when I built this, uh, I think that was earlier this year or was that last year? It all bleeds together. What I do at some point before the winter gets here, uh, need to sew covers for the side of this. I'm going to use a umbrella and a little bit of clear plastic. Do a big cover on here. There'll be a heater inside. I think the front, I don't know, I might put some uh, faux glass in there. Maybe a zipper or something to open. 
not really sure yet as always we'll just see what happens once i get started but yeah once things uh free solid out here it gets a little bit painful to take a shower outside the biggest issue that came to mind uh maybe i mentioned this before is that the way the shower works you heat the water there you dump it on your head it goes down through the floor that's why there are cracks in the cedar floor but once it freezes outside even if you can heat the air in here a little bit so it's like say 40 degrees when you take a shower you know heat rises it's not going to be hot down on the floor and i'm pretty confident that the the water your shower water is going to freeze and fill up those cracks so i don't know we'll just figure out what to do when we get there in the meantime let's kill some shrooms you know what i just thought of i uh forgot i was going to put this in the last video the birthday video i owe y'all an enormous thank you this is so exciting listen as you guys know I make, I want to make great videos that people want to watch. I also make these videos just as a journal, kind of something I can look back on when I'm slightly older and slightly more cripple, but I do my best to make sure that I don't do things just to make videos. I want this, this is my life and I like to share it. I don't want to change my life in order to make the videos because if I do that, this whole thing just won't last. I'd be, I'd have quit two years ago. I would have packed up and. I don't know, went to Honolulu or something. But because I do, every day I do just what I wanna do and then I film it for you guys. I did have the thought a month or two ago, what could I do, what kind of tool could I get, what could I do differently to mix up the videos? I have thought about getting a bandsaw mill, although I like chainsaw milling and the bandsaw mill really wouldn't help me out here. I don't have a way to move big logs. If I had monster logs that uh, you know are slow to chainsaw mill and I want to do them a bandsaw, I still can't move them over there. I still have to mill most of the stuff in the woods where it sits. So I thought, no, let's not do bandsaw mill. And then it hit me. Everything I make out here is so rough. I don't sand anything, I don't finish anything. It's all, like everything you see has a chainsaw finish on it. But I thought with this place, I may end up having this cabin for a very long time. I might live in here until I die. You just never know. So the inside of this, I want to build differently. I want it to be really nice. Everything in here, I want to make by hand from the trees on the property. You guys have seen, I'm super excited to put the uh, big desk in here in the shelves because I got that one crazy cedar with all the colors in it and everything that I slabbed. I think I slabbed those two inches. Anyway, you've seen those a bunch of times sitting over there. I want those to be really nice desks, tables, everything. Thank you, patrons, the people that support me on Patreon. You continually blow my mind that you're willing to help out and uh thank you for getting me a birthday present something to do a little different in the videos Ta -ta. i saved up some of my patreon money and i bought a planer of course i don't have normal electricity out here so i'll have to run the generator to use this but i just thought it would be cool i, I mean I'm, i might put a nicer floor in here you can see this is all chainsaw finish I think I might make this the subfloor and put another floor on top. If I do that, I'll probably put the floor down with screws, let it season for a while, pop the boards back off one by one, throw them through the planer, and then put 10 coats of some kind of varnish on the floor so it looks amazing. Also, all the tables I make, everything in here is going to go through the planer. It, they, I actually may have to make the tables, let them sit for a season, because I'm not, you guys know, I'm not going to let this wood season and then use it. I like to use the green wood, screw it down in place so it can't warp, and then if it screws, it's real easy. Take a couple screws out, pop the top off, run it through the, fl the planer, and then I can finish it. I actually don't know if I've ever used a, a planer like this. You guys have seen me use the hand planer in just about every single video for the last several years. But apparently it's pretty standard. The biggest you can get is 13 inches, and I think this is... 15 amp that's my guess is they don't get much wider than that because you want to be able to plug it into a regular uh, 120 socket i do make wood out here boards that are up to 15 16 17 inches so i'll be kind of limited to 13 but i'll just kind of keep that in mind and anything that i want to plane later on i'll just have to trim off the edges just to get them through the planer i don't know anyway thank you guys so much this is awesome i really appreciate your thoughtfulness and picking this out for me I can't wait to get it out of the box and actually plane something. I still have my uh, hanging table. I had to take it apart because it uh, dried out and wasn't hanging right. But you guys remember this floating table where the top hangs from this? 
comes up over in there. There's the top upside down. I was hoping to be able to run this through the planer just to make a really nice flat top on it and then finish it. However, I mean, I didn't think about this. I didn't know I was going to have a planer when I built the table. I probably have to cut it down the middle and make two pieces to plane and then stick it back together. Anyway, all sorts of ideas. I thought it'd be fun for you guys to see something other than a doofus with a chainsaw every week. Can't wait to see what it see what it'll do. All right, let's kill some uh, let's kill some fungi. I'm just looking to see if any of the white fungus stuff is still on these boards, or if the I did spray this all with that really light bleach solution a month or so ago. Well, whatever. Let's just spray the whole thing. Oh yeah, check it out. There's still uh, some mycelium, some roots. It's a good thing I'm taking the time to hose this down. That could be a real problem once it all gets closed in. Sorry, is that getting on you? Sure looks like it is. Hope it doesn't melt the camera. Whew, I'm hungry enough for a hot dog or two. It's a lot of smoke. I don't know if there's any fire. Got my noise canceling headphones in. I almost forgot that the generator was running. 100%. Ninety-nine, good enough. And we're set for the week. Oh yeah, that's got a good glow. That'll be a ten-second hot dog. Okay, okay, you you've probably seen hot dogs cooked on a fire before, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to watch me eat. Just so you know, uh, the finest toppings for uh, fire-cooked hot dogs. Our sandwich pal, that great horsey sauce, and this stuff that Taryn found at a hardware store called Truff. It's really hot truffle hot hot sauce. Delicious. I'm gonna double it up on both. Oh, smells so good. Here's some, oh. You can't smell it, your camera. <laughs> this sitting stuff is kind of nice. You should try it more often. I love it when it's the right season to get a good apple, especially a good honey crisp. Amazing. What day is this, Monday? Yeah, I should be in a cubicle right now. Yeah, maybe next week. Hey, by the way, in case this is helpful for anybody, you know it's totally okay to live your life however you want to. Like, whatever you're living alone in the woods is. Nobody ever told me that. I had to figure it out on my own, but if something like this looks fun, you really should just try it. Or whatever that thing is you're into. You don't have to spend your whole life working and buying stuff and saving money for retirement. Of course, I might be screwed when I get older and have to retire and don't have any money, but I've been doing this stuff for more than 20 years and I'm still fine still having fun just do it I'm not telling you to quit your job or anything but you know if it happened it wouldn't be the worst thing ever just in case you've been thinking about it and you needed somebody to tell you it's okay it's okay oh yeah still a lot more white stuff I don't know if that could be uh, old and dead since it's drying out or if that's still active well it's gone now hope I get every bit of it Okay, this is not the right side to be working on. Dang it. Guess I'll finish it tomorrow. Oh, I went out and I got pond water. <laughs> Except on my list of things to do today was to fix the brakes on my car, so I just spent an hour and a half doing that too. And now, well, I mean, I think there's something really wrong with the days. Have you noticed that? They just shrink. Kind of sucks. 
it certainly wasn't approved by me but uh, i guess we got to deal with it so uh, I do want to get those spores in here, and the only thing I can't find right now is I kind of wanted to spray them out of something. Even that pump sprayer would be great, but I can only get one of them to work, and that one is full of antifungal stuff. So probably better not do that. All right, so this is supposed to be one day. This is going to be, oh, this would be 24-hour video. I'll finish it tomorrow before I start it. To, we'll get, yep, we'll get all that stuff done. Mushrooms in the morning. Man, oh man, what a beautiful morning. It's uh, 50 degrees. Perfect. Just perfect. Little overcast. Not much in the way of rain. I think tomorrow is supposed to rain a bunch. Um, let's try this puffball thing. Let's grab some spores and see what happens. I have no idea if this will make any difference. The more I think about it, it's interesting those puffballs, once they start shooting spores out of them, they sit like that for a month it seems like. You see a light uh, drizzle on it and every time a raindrop hits you see the spores go up. And like I said, there are trillions of spores in each one, literally trillions. Yeah, so as I think of it, I mean, nature probably made it so that that actually works better than some a-hole grabbing a jug full of water and mixing them in. But I'm going to try it anyway. Yeah, let's give it a go. I'll grab a pan here. Let's see. I'm just going to tear them open. Chuck the whole thing in. These are kind of used up. They've been puffballing for several weeks now. Oh, delicious. Look at that. Wow. Wow, the really weird thing is it's it's super, what, hydrophobic. It's so bizarre. It won't, uh, I think all that is just on the top of the water. None of it will go down in there. Even uh, the whole pieces, you push them down, jiggle them around, they come back up dry. That is crazy. Who'd have thunk it? Well, I guess that's why they can uh, continue to puff out spores for so long. When the rain hits them, you'd think a few raindrops would get in there and it kind of spoil the whole uh, puffball show, but it doesn't. Wild. I'm wondering if maybe I could shake it if any of it would get in the water. Need a better, better way to spread it around anyway than just dumping this whole thing somewhere. Weird. It's all the spores are flying off the top of the water when I dump it. Well, maybe we'll grow some puffballs right on the table. Might wonder why I'm going to such trouble for puffballs if you're a mushroomer. They're not the most choicest mushroom, but out here they're around and they're really easy to identify. And I like them. I haven't seen, uh, you know, a bunch of morels or chanterelles or anything. So, plus, with the easy, easy to retrieve spores, I just thought it'd be worth trying. What do you think? Is any of it in the water? Is it still sitting on top? Well, this would be the best place for a puffball farm, right by my coolers. So I think I'm just going to drizzle it on some of this decaying wood and stuff. Oh, if it'll even come out. There it goes. I am drizzling it right on top of other mushrooms, so maybe they can duke it out. If this does work, I'll always wonder if it's the tiny traces of chalk line chalk that actually made it work. You can kind of see how its native version of spreading would be a lot more efficient than this. That stuff is so fine that it probably carries for miles on the wind. 
Whatever, it's worth trying. You just never know. Well, now all we can do is wait and see what happens. Check back next year if you like. So after I got some errands to run now, tomorrow's rain, and then I'm right back at this full time. So hopefully, well, I don't think it's going to take more than a day. I'm going to get it wrapped and get the uh, windows put on there. And then it's uh, to the log piles, milling and slapping on siding. So day after tomorrow, this will be, it'll be closed in anyway, except for the door. I don't really know when you put the door on. Should I put the door on? before the siding could i do it after the siding i mean the good thing is it'll all work itself out you don't have to know that stuff up front everything just falls into place so thanks for watching 24 hours at ringworm hopefully we'll see you again next week peace